So hi, I'm uh, Tero and I'm going to do some closure script programming for your entertainment, which is game of life. So I'll begin by defining the state of the application, which is a, an atom, which, is, which holds the set of uh, cells that is currently alive. And here is one such set. And then I'll define a uh, UI for this, which is a React component called grid. And that renders an SVG element that has some sort of size, width and height, and it has a coordinate origin in the middle. So the zero is at the middle of this thing. And then I'll render this to the screen by calling the render for the grid and putting it in the body of the current document. And there we see that. And then I'll actually put this live form itself into this grid by taking all the X and Y of the cells that are currently in the state and create a SVG rectangle for each one of those. And they also have some sort of width and height as well as an X and a Y based on their coordinates. X and Y. And there we see the life form. And now we can actually talk about how to make it come alive. So this will be all about uh, defining the next generation of this life form based on the previous generation. So we'll make a pure function called next population that takes a population and returns the next generation of it. And that's going to be based on the uh, looking at the neighbors of the cells that are currently alive. So we need a little helper function called neighbors that actually takes a cell and returns the set of coordinates all around that cell in all directions. So we'll look at the deltas of x to the left to the center and to the right of the original and do the same for the y coordinates. And then we want to skip the case where both of the deltas are actually zero because that's going to be the original cell. But for everything else, we come up with these new coordinates based on the x and y and the deltas. So that's a collection of cells around a given cell. And this will now use to make our new population. So we actually get all the neighbors of all the cells that are currently alive by mapping this over this function over the population. And then we'll count how many times each neighbor is in there by using the frequencies function. And then this is what, what we base our next population on. So we'll look at the cells and the counts that are currently in that neighbor count value. And we are interested in the ones that either are there three times or are there twice if they were also in the previous population. And this will be our new population. And we'll put that in a set as well. So if I got this right, I can apply this to our state now and come up with the next population. There we go. And we can make this happen automatically if we start a process of evolution. So we start a loop, an asynchronous loop, which waits for, say, 100 milliseconds, swaps the state to the next one, and then recurs. So it's an infinite asynchronous loop or a process of evolution, which we can start from the REPL. There we go. And if we make our primordial soup a little bit more interesting, we can see how that works. Whoops. Stare. There we go. That's life in closure script. Thank you. And if I still have some seconds, I'll mention what I used. So this is ClojureScript, the reagent wrapper for, for React, the FigWheel auto reloader tool, the core async library for the asynchronous stuff, and the algorithm itself for this live implementation is by Christoph Grand, which he has online. Thank you. <laughs>